Welcome back to the School Card Sense. It's Tim and Jack, and we're back for part two of our back lever, where we're going to look at banded back lever progressions. So to get our back lever progressions nailed down, we've got to sometimes find a way to make it a little bit easier because just imagine your whole body weight in one go is pretty difficult when you first get into this. So we're going to use the assistance tool from our oh, locker. Comes down there, the locker. Which is our uh, bands. These are going to provide a, it's a simple way, just as you would do if you were doing some more traditional weight training, just taking weight off a bar. These are going to take a little bit of weight off our body weight and enable us to practice those progressions. We're going with the thin one, the little thin red one, um, because. Me and Tim are quite good at back leaders. Um, <laughs> but you can progressively build, even just with the exercise machine, you can start with a big fat green or blue one and you can work your way down as well. But you'll be surprised, you don't need as much support as you might think you will do. But it is important that you pick a band, which means you do some work, because we do this on a workshop and sometimes a big band means people just are literally hanging there, I guess, yeah. <laughs> back lever, but they're doing no work whatsoever. So pick something which still means you're going to put some strength in the tank. So this first part of this is just getting comfortable with the band now we actually set it up just so that we don't get ourselves twisted in a tangle or thinking the band's there and falling off it. So very, keep it very, very simple. The band goes through off on the inside of the ring and then you put your hand directly on top of it. No need to tie any knots, uh, but just keep your hand on top. The other uh, band goes over the other ring and then your hand goes on top as well. And as long as that stays on top in your palm and you don't let go of the ring, the band isn't going anywhere. Okay, so then first step, we're just going to look at how we get into this skin the cat position. So what Tim's going to do, this is going to act as a crane. He's going to try and lift his hips and put his hips on top of the band. As you see when he did that, if you just come back again to him and just show us again, you'll see that to get the hips a little bit higher, he's probably going to do a little bit of a, a pull up more than he might do normally. So he's going to pull just to get a little bit more height so he doesn't get anything caught underneath the band. And then he makes sure he's got his hands facing uh, forwards and then he can use the band to support him as he goes round in that skin the cat and it might be that you found it difficult in skin the cat to start with and this is a great little progression for you to do that so you can start working down and now having the strength because the band's helping you to pull yourself back around so we can work up building some strength in there. So the job now is to start to create that connection between the shoulders pulling and the body position where we've got our feet off the floor. So we're going to use the same principle that we used in lesson one around the, the, the walk back lever, but we're going to now apply it into skin the cat, so bringing those two things together. So Jack has got the band set up as before for the skin the cat. He's going to lift himself up, pop his hips onto the band, and then he goes into this rotation. So he's going to find the end point of his skin the cat. The job now is to start to think about creating that nice flat back position that we looked at in that first lesson, and he's going to start to pull his head forward by pulling the hands down towards the hips. So he flattens himself out a little bit. You can see the angle closes slightly, the band is giving him the support. Just like if we we're trying to balance a seesaw, we've got to shift some weight forwards if we're going to send weight backwards. The legs are going to weigh a lot more than the torso, so the further forward he can go, the better. But you can see he keeps his palms facing towards the ceiling, hand comes down towards the hip, he opens that chest up and he starts to shift weight forwards. He can hang out in there, just create some tension. It might be that you put some reps in there or you're going to try and hold that for five to ten seconds building that connection and starting to learn how to create that force, which is going to enable you to then start to take the legs further out. The stronger you get in here, you can remove the band, but that is that exact position there, which is going to be the basis of you being able to extend the legs out in a fully unsupported position. Once we've mastered that pull through, we can start to layer the exercise up a little bit by taking the legs further away from our hands into that full extended back lever. But there's still a progressive way in which we can do that. So Jacko is going to come through his skins a cat again before he rotates himself around. He's going to perform the pull through again, supported by the band. But then from this position, he can actually start to extend one leg out. So he's still putting the force down to hold that position in the pull through, but pushing one leg makes it a little bit more difficult, more weight away from the put the space of support and if he's comfortable there he can then take the second one and this is going to be our full back lever position you can see again from that lesson one in the walk back bums on tummies on tight shoulders packed in and hands are coming down trying to close this angle from hand to hip that's how we create attention and that's how we hold the position if he's strong enough he can pull himself back out and we can start to work with different bands to provide different amounts of support until you can eventually remove the band entirely and then you've just nailed your first back lever and redefined your impossible. 
So I hope that's given you some ideas about how you can progress towards that back lever and help you to redefine your imposter. It really is like it has a nice place in my heart, the back lever, because it was the first thing that we ever did. And it looks cool, right? It like does look cool. People look at you and go, actually, oh, you must have been training car since for ages. No, it's the first thing I've learned. <laughs> Um, uh, we've used some bands there in the rings. If you, if you need any equipment like that, we have got now, we've partnered with Bulldog and we have got these products available on our website in the shop. So check that out. There's in, details in the description below. So that's the end of lesson two. You can go back and watch lesson one for those cues as well. But until next time... Class is missed!